WIX and NewsRadio1310.com. It's 56. I came across a story today, uh, saw it online. It comes from WCCO-TV in Minneapolis. I visited there. I, I was at a convention in Minneapolis in the year 2000. I got to meet the then governor of that state, Jesse Ventura. And I remember I was also staying in a hotel just down the street from the TV station, and we could watch the weatherman do his weather from the roof. And I, I just walked over to the station one day and, and uh, paid my quick respects. But I, I've got to tell you, the liberals who, who are anchoring at that TV station are currently they're beside themselves this morning because just about 15, 20 miles south of the metropolitan Minneapolis Twin Falls area is a little town called Lonsdale. I mean, it's about the size of Kimberly, Idaho. And there's a fellow who runs a hamburger stand there, might sell ham sandwiches too, which may be part of all of this. But he has attracted the attention of the media because at his own private business, he put out a sign out front that said, Muslims, get out. It tells you what's on the menu, and then at the bottom it says, Muslims, get out. <laughs> media and a handful of the mealy mouths in his hometown are very, very upset with him. This is his reaction to what happened about 75 miles away in St. Cloud over the weekend where a Muslim terrorist burst into a mall and stabbed 10 people. Take a listen to the restaurant order for just a moment. It's time that people started standing up, not worrying about the PC crowd, and do what is right. And I feel what we're doing is right. We are not targeting the Muslims in general, just the extremists. And that's all I can say. It's my right, and I'm going to stand up, and I wish more people would do it. How dare he? He's going to hurt their feelings, and that's not nice. Speaking of which... (laughs) <laughs> story today. And I just, I caught a little bit of this last night, too, on Special Report. No, wait a minute, it was on the record, but, you know, Britt Hume used to host Special Report, now he's hosting on the record while they look for a permanent host of that program. And he was having a conversation with Nina Totenberg. She's from an organization called NPR. Well, that stands, as I understand it, for National Palestinian Radio. And he brought up the fact that Donald Trump Jr., The media is now just having a cow because Donald Trump Jr. tweeted the other day, and he was trying to make an analogy, where he said, if I offered you a bowl of Skittles, but I told you three of them were deadly, would you take the Skittles from me? In other words, saying, all right, I understand. What he's saying is, I understand that not all Muslims are bad people. We always have to qualify everything, don't we? Not all of them are bad people. No, 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 just the ones who try to kill you. So what he was trying to point out is, if you're bringing all of these people here, Perhaps it's time for a pause in this refugee resettlement program. And he's supported by people uh, along the lines of, I believe, uh, uh, Jim Risch. He's supported along the lines of people of, uh, of, of Ted Cruz and, of course, his own father, Donald Trump. Until we get this straightened out and figure out who's coming here or who's not coming here, why add to the problem? So Britt Hume turns to Nina, Nina Totenberg and says, what's the big deal about all of this? She says, well, well, uh, well, well, you know, it's, it's what they've said before, you know, uh, 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 it's it's an analogy. And then then the other part of this is Skittles is a company that, uh, well, whoever the parent company happens to be that manufactures Skittles, they're in the sugar industry, obviously. Just a week ago, all of your big liberal newspapers across the country were screaming about how the sugar lobby has a stranglehold on government. And because of that, uh, that they've been allowed to produce many more foods that are laced with sugar that would be bad for your health. And that's why Americans are so fat today. So a week ago, sugar, the sugar industry was bad, 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 bad. Now the people who sell Skittles, and they'd like to obviously sell them to Muslims too, are coming out and saying, Skittles is candy and Muslims are people. Refugees, I guess, was the word they used instead of Muslims. In other words, yeah, we could probably sell a lot of Skittles this way over in Saudi Arabia. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, look at that profit margin. Uh, Who cares if a couple of people get stabbed at a mall in Minneapolis? Look at my paycheck. Uh, The the nature of these liberals, how they are going just so bat crap crazy about all of this stuff. Here we are at war, and they just cannot bring themselves to admit it. In fact, the only thing they want to admit is more foreign warriors. Yeah, bring them here. Yeah, yeah, we'll all go sit down and we'll hold hands and we'll sing Kumbaya together. Yeah, that'll work. That's the ticket. Kumbaya, Lord. Kumbaya. How 
quickly, by the way, can we send the mayor of London, England, back to his country? He apparently came over here because even though he's not the prime minister, he came here for the United Nations meeting in New York City. London Mayor Sadiq Khan to U.S. immigrants, don't assimilate. That's the headline. That's the headline at Middle East Forum. Take a listen to a couple of paragraphs out of all of this. London's Muslim mayor, Sadiq Khan, has continued his pro-Hillary Clinton tour of the United States by declaring that immigrants into the West should not be forced to assimilate. He added, people shouldn't have to drop their cultures and traditions when they arrive in our cities and countries. Well, okay, but why should I drop mine? Because that's the argument, isn't it? it it's always, well, you know, it's a wonderful country you got here, but you've got to start living like the rest of us. And you know what? Uh, first of all, we've all got to put our wives in tents. And if a man looks at them, we have to burn them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's our way, and, and now you've got to live that way too. That's the problem. By not assimilating, they're demanding that we change our ways. I even had a liberal New York State assemblywoman on a radio show with me about 10 years ago. And she even went off on these people who come here, and then they get here, and then they say, your country has to change for me. No, it doesn't. There's an airplane over there. Get your bottom back on it and fly out of here. We'll leave it at that. If, if you want to go around beheading people and throwing people off minarets because you don't like their sexual orientation, then you get on that airplane over there and you go back to Mecca. You'll be happy you're there. You're not going to be happy here, so go away. 814, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Speaking of Jim Risch, uh, of course, some people say he's the co host of CNN's Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer. I mean, he's on that program so often. Uh, Senator Risch from Idaho making an appearance on that program, and he explains it's very difficult at this stage of the game anywhere to pinpoint exactly which one of these people is dangerous when they come here. He, uh, he had uh, the American dream in his hand, uh, uh, was, was brought here as a young child, grew up in, a, uh, in American schools and what have you, but then somewhere along the line, uh, he was radicalized. And uh, what, what precipitated that? What caused that? Maybe some of it will come off of the uh, information on uh, computers and that sort of thing. But as you know, that's a tough job. I've seen you've had the psychiatrists on here uh, over the years trying to pick apart the California or the, or the Florida or the Texas incidents. And it's, it's very difficult uh, to, to decide what was the turning point. So is it the working assumption now, Senator, that he acted alone, that no one helped him build those bombs, which were pretty sophisticated. That is the working assumption right now. There is no evidence to, to lead to the contrary at this point. That is Senator Jim Risch speaking on the Situation Room on CNN. And, and his point is, we can't vet people like this guy, Rahami, who tried to bomb New Jersey and New York City over the weekend. Some Clinton surrogate made the comment that your chances of being killed by a, an Islamic refugee in this country are about three and a half billion to one. Well, that's a lottery that I don't want to win. If you happen to be that one, that's unfortunate for you, I guess, huh? And unfortunate for your family. Here's the thing. If you have a dozen crimes in your community every year, and, uh, and the local people tell you, well, yeah, but only uh, one of those was committed by a Muslim immigrant. Well, okay, but that would be one less crime if that immigrant wasn't here. Let me, let me go a little bit further with this explanation. If that Sudanese immigrant hadn't, uh, hadn't gone to the mall in Minnesota and stabbed 10 people over the weekend, let's say he'd never come here. Let's say his family has, had decided to stay in Sudan uh, where they could you know, stew their enemies in a pot and chop people's heads off and burn people at the stake. Let's say they had stayed in Sudan and they had never come here. It's not like some white Christian would have been sitting around his living room Saturday afternoon thinking, hmm... You know, I bet at another timeline that some Muslim would go to the mall tonight dressed as a security guard and go out and stab 10 people. But since he's not here, I'm going to go do it instead. In other words, that crime would not have happened. And to sit here and say, but yeah, it's only a small fraction of the crime committed in this country. I don't want any crime. Why would I want to increase it even a smidgen? I don't like being a victim of crime. I've been a victim of crime on a couple of occasions. It's not pleasant. And I know for the liberals out there, they keep looking at this and thinking, well, criminals are Democrats, so we can't do anything about it because we want their votes. The rest of us would like to live our lives in safety. 
It's 817. Telephone number to reach our program today, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Bill Colley with you on Top Story today until 10 o'clock. Some of the things we have coming up, we'll be joined by one of the medical professionals from Trip Family Medicine between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning. And then following the 9 o'clock news, Lee Stranahan is going to join us. He's working with some of these folks in town who have been so apoplectic about this issue uh, that they've been badgering the city council now for months and months and months. My question to him is, is basically going to be, what is it they expect the local politicians to do? Because this is really... It's going to take a president to change this program. And there's only one candidate for president right now who's willingly said he's going to do it. So we'll have that conversation coming up in about one hour on this program. Bill Colley with you, as I said, until 10 o'clock today on KLIX. Meanwhile, a writer by the name of Michael Goodwin at the New York Post says, poor President Obama thought he was going to go to the United Nations yesterday and apologize for the United States and put globalism first. He says Hillary Clinton also had a perfect plan. She would keep attacking Donald Trump and his supporters as dangerous and deplorable in hopes that she could scare her way into the White House. But terrorist bombings and stabbings, he writes, are great disruptors. In other words, Hillary Clinton says if you're supporting Trump, you're a far more serious threat to this country than these guys who are running around a mall in Minnesota screaming, Allah Akbar, and cutting people up while they're doing it. The average Trump supporter that I know is nothing more than a couch potato. Now, that may not be good for your health, and you may be sitting there gobbling Skittles and getting obese all day long while you're watching that TV set. But beyond that, you're not a threat to anyone. We have a short break on the way. Bill Colley with you this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, at NewsRadio1310.com. And we've got more on this subject coming up in just a couple of minutes. I do want to point out, as I said, Lee Stranahan will join us just after 9 o'clock news this morning on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. He's working with a local group who hopes to bring some changes to Twin Falls. As I say, the question is, how are you going to do that on the local level if we're subject to the whims of a federal government that is tone deaf? 824, Bill Colley with you today on News Radio 1310 KLIX and 54 right now. also wanted to point out in a few weeks we'll be hearing again in studio from our friend Dr. Eric F. Jones. When he was here a couple of months back, he got the telephones just a burning. He uses a holistic, systemic approach to wellness, and he's been doing this since 1993. Think about this. For thousands of years, people used traditional methods, and civilization survived. Today, it's all about, you know, doping people up with pharmaceuticals. He has a master's and doctoral degree in marriage and family therapy, or degrees we should point out. Dr. Jones uses methods of alternative healing, such as naturopathy, medicinal herbs, nutrition, sound waves, intellectual and cognitive self-regulation, and napathy. These help remedy and manage mental, emotional, physical, as well as spiritual challenges. He's accepting new patients. He's got evening and Saturday appointments available. Dr. Jones' telephone number is 731-7178, and he's on Facebook. Just look up Eric F. Jones, Ph.D., mental health and wellness therapist, and that's Eric with a C. 825, Bill Colley with you this morning. As I said, and the telephone number to reach our program if you've got a question or a comment is 736-0300. That is 736-0300. And we are dealing, I think, right now with a moment in American history where the elites still have not caught on that they've had a break with the people they've represented. But if we have just one more of these attacks between now and Election Day, I think things will turn to the point where there will be such a groundswell for Donald Trump, it won't even be close, that you'll be looking at a potential landslide. I'm not hoping for that, obviously, but they are so out of touch, they just don't see it. And that was the point that Piers Morgan, when I mentioned him earlier, that he was making in his column in London's Daily Mail, is that these people, Morgan said that he had been traveling around the United States, and he said he'd gone to Texas and Florida and some other places that you know, your media folks either stay in the Washington Beltway or New York. They don't get m- many places other than that. You know, they'll fly into Nebraska during a primary, and they'll walk into a diner and with their, their Klieg lights and everything else, and they'll set up, and then they'll ask the people there, well, you know, what do you think about uh, this? And, of course, the people will generally tell them whatever they want to hear, so they'll leave, and then you can get back to eating your eggs and your, your sourdough bread. But Morgan said he's been traveling to a lot of different places, and he said Trump is definitely resonating with the American public. And people are 
Well, there's an old joke after the 1992 election when George H.W. Bush lost. And he was nothing but a rhino Republican anyway. Uh, he lost the election to Bill Clinton. And uh, on Saturday Night Live, Dana Carvey was, uh, was... Dana Carvey, I guess, used to play all of these roles back then. Dana Carvey was saying, you know, I got your message. He's, he's playing Bush in the Oval Office, and he holds up a sign, and it says, people are pissed. Well, I don't think the country today is anything like it was in 1992. Today, it's rage. And the politicians who still don't seem to be able to grasp that are in the long run. If someone can come along, and let me put it this way, someone can come along and at least put together a decent campaign. You know, we, sometimes the problem is incumbency is a very strong thing. We know that. But it is because too often the people who come along and challenge, well, you know, they're out there beyond the solar system. But if you can find some people who actually have some stable thoughts and ideas, then I think you might be able to shake this tree a little bit because I don't know how else we're going to turn things around. Can I also note that there's a group of Republican congressmen who have said that it's time now to bring an end to this program as well. You've got, the, you've got Ted Cruz over in the Senate leading the charge. The people who are behind this in the House, it appears that it's the Freedom Caucus, of which our own Raul Labrador is a member. Uh, he was scheduled to join us in this segment this morning, but he had to go to a hearing, so we're going to try to reschedule either for the next couple of days or sometime next week. But we are now finally seeing people in Washington itself, and this is what we've always needed, because your local council, your county commission, your state legislators, uh, even Governor Otter, who said he's opposed to the program, they can't stop it, but people in Washington can. And they've got to take the bull by the horns. We've got less than a minute before the break. Caller, you're up next on KLIX. Go ahead. What are you talking about? Uh, people with uh, saying, do you do you see the crime that is going on against the minorities? And then you expect Donald Trump to all... I just saw a video from act. Tulsa, Oklahoma today, by the way, if I could add to that. I saw a video out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, that, uh, that black man who was shot by the white police officer, guess what? He put his hands down and started walking away from her, and then he reached for his pockets. What the hell do you think she's going to do? Wait for him to pull a gun out and shoot her? And, and, and the same thing in Charlotte. When we see the video, there'll be some, some clear. By the way, one of the demonstrators from the Black Lives Matter group in uh, Charlotte last night, they were broadcasting their riot live on Facebook, and uh, the puke said into the camera something along the lines of, we the Taliban. So we know whose side they happen to be on. A very, very dangerous, dangerous people. 830. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. Breaks your heart, doesn't it, when we actually see the videos and you can actually back up the police officers in these situations. We have better health with Trip Family Medicine on the way in just a few minutes. Right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 53.